uh, day after day. It's almost like a melt-up at this point of optimism and enthusiasm, despite the, the enormity of the problems that everybody wants to sweep under this rug. And the rug, believe me, has you know, got a mountain of stuff already underneath it. I think the newest catalyst that is fueling the euphoria is the anticipation of these tax cuts that are coming, right? Not even really tax reform, but tax cuts. The Republicans, the Senate at least, passed the budget during the week. $4.1 trillion of government spending. Um, obviously, a lot of it borrowed money. Uh, apparently, there are some cuts in domestic spending, but not nearly enough to offset the big increases that we're getting in defense spending and, of course, the automatic increases that we get in entitlement. So really no cuts to speak of. More government, bigger deficits, yet somehow this paves the way for tax cuts. It shouldn't. Bigger government paves the way for tax hikes, even if the government wants to pretend there are tax cuts. You know, I had a debate when I was at the a money show in uh, Dallas, and I was on a panel. Mark Skousen was the mediator of the panel, and um, one of the people on the panel was Steve Forbes. And he had just finished speaking right before. So he gave a standalone speech right before this panel. And then so I made some references during the panel and got into a bit of an argument with Steve Forbes. And you know, I don't often disagree with Steve Forbes. I mean, Steve Forbes was actually one of the few people that publicly endorsed me when I ran for Senate in 2010. I mean, not that many people did that. He came out and endorsed me and he did a mailing uh, on endorsing me for, for U.S. Senate. But what Steve said in his speech, and he was really mad at the Republicans for talking about tax reform. He said, forget about reform, just call it a cut, give everybody a cut, tax cuts for everybody, make sure they're retroactive to January 1st, let everybody get a raise, let the public know if they support Republicans, they're going to get more money, they're going to have a bigger paycheck, right? they're going to get a raise, they're going to pay lower taxes. And he was all excited about how important it is that we just cut taxes and that we have to forget about trying to pay for the tax cuts or talk about how we need tax hikes to cover the tax cuts. It's all nonsense. We just cut taxes across the board for everybody, and it's going to be great. And, of course, I started to argue with Steve Forbes that this is not true, that this is the Republican version of a free lunch, right? The Democrats like to promise free stuff, which is stuff from the government. Well, the Republicans want to promise free tax cuts. What's a free tax cut? That's a tax cut that happens even though you don't reduce government spending. The point I made to Steve and the audience was that the cost of government is not measured by what it taxes, but by what it spends. And so if the government is spending money, then there is a cost associated with that. Whether or not we pay for that through taxation, we're still going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it through more debt through more inflation, and ultimately higher taxes in the future to not only repay the debt, but to pay the interest on the money that we borrowed to finance the tax cuts. So cutting taxes, but borrowing and printing the difference is worse. I would rather pay for government with taxes than debt and inflation and higher taxes in the future. That's the argument that I made. And another thing that I challenged Steve Forbes, I said, Steve, if the Republicans are going to tell their constituents that they can get tax cuts even if government spending continues to grow, then how do they have the political ability to generate the swell of public opinion to shrink government? See, what I want the Republicans to do is make it all about less government. I want the Republicans to say, you've got a choice. You can have big government and high taxes, or you can have small government and low taxes. That's it. You can't have big government and low taxes. That's what the Republicans want to sell. That's what Steve Forbes was advocating. But I don't like that because if people think they can have their cake and eat it too, then that's what they're going to want. But if you put it in those terms, hey, you want lower taxes? We need less government. Right? If you want to pay less for government, then government has to do less. Government has to cost less. So, yes, you can have a big tax cut, you can have more take-home pay, but these are the government programs we need to eliminate to make that possible. These are the agencies that we have to get rid of. These are the entitlements that we have to cut. And maybe if you do it that way, you'll be able to generate some support for cutting government spending 
if people realize that there is a reward for that, that there is something to look forward to, right? You cut the government spending and then you get the tax cuts. See, Steve Forbes is like, no, let's give them the tax cuts first. Well, if we get the tax cuts first, we're never going to get the spending. It's like, you know, I've got young kids. They want dessert. You want your dessert? Eat your dinner. Eat your dinner. Then you get your dessert. If I just say, okay, here's the dessert first, they're never going to eat their dinner. They only eat the dinner as a means to get to the ends. They want the dessert, so they have to eat the dinner first, right? So you can't tell the public you can have your tax cuts first, and then we'll cut spending later because we're never going to get the cuts. you got to say, hey, the tax cuts are contingent on the spending cuts. Let's cut spending, and then if we do that, we can cut taxes. So I had this argument with Steve Forbes, and but this is what's going on with the Republicans today. They're trying to sell this tax cut, but the markets are all excited about it. And apparently, too, now that they've passed this budget or are in the process of passing it, now they can supposedly enact these tax cuts based on a simple majority. So this, this budget passing was seen as a milestone, right, on the road to these tax cuts, which the market is celebrating because, yes, you know, taxes are going to go down on corporations. Taxes are going to go down on pass-throughs. And so obviously the upper income people are going to have some tax cuts if this thing goes through, at least initially.